We are celebrating today the great work of Jesus Christ. We are celebrating all that Jesus did for us, all that he is still doing and will do for us. For the work of Christ is the work of reconciliation, the healing of humanity, and the sending forth of believers in the power of the Holy Spirit. What we are celebrating today is far too much to put into words. That's why we call it a mystery. And instead, we use images to try to grasp more with our hearts than with our minds all that Christ is doing. Now, the most familiar image of this great mystery is also the name of our feast day today, the Ascension, the going up of Jesus, his returning to heaven, or as we say in the creed, his sitting at the right hand of God the Father. But today's reading from the letter to the Hebrews uses a different image. It's an image based on the ancient Jewish day of atonement, Yom Kippur. If you get out your Bible, look for the third book of the Old Testament and go to chapter 16, and there you will find in very detailed explanation, description of this ceremony of atonement. We won't do all that right now, but the essence of it is this, that once a year on the Day of Atonement, the high priest would go in to the innermost room of the temple, the Holy of Holies. He would go in with incense in one hand and blood in the other, the blood of a sacrifice. The incense was so that there would be a cloud so that he would not accidentally see the face of God in this most holy place. And there in that sacred room, he would sprinkle this blood, this blood of sacrifice, on the front of the Ark of the Covenant and on the floor of the sanctuary and by doing so would then purify the sanctuary and wash away all the sins of the people and would renew the holy covenant between God and Israel. I've sometimes wondered why blood was used for a ceremony like this. Well, it's because the ancient Hebrews believed that blood was the very essence of life, that in a sense, blood was the soul made visible the spirit of, of a human being, their, their innermost life was visible in the blood. And because of its sacredness, it belonged to God. So whenever a sacrifice was offered, or even when just a, an animal was slaughtered for food, that blood had to be treated with the utmost respect and poured out and offered to God as a gift, thanking God for this privilege of sharing in life. And because that blood was such a sacred sign and belonged to God, they believed that only blood had the power to atone for sin, to wash sin away. And only blood could be the communication, the way of bestowing divine mercy upon the people. And so our reading today from Hebrews puts Jesus in that scene, in the role of the high priest. It says that his death was the sacrifice. And now Jesus doesn't just go into an ordinary temple, he goes into heaven itself and makes an offering before God, and there he prays for us. And the Je Jesus offering is his own blood, and he offers it to God on our behalf. And so then Jesus becomes our reconciliation, our atonement. Jesus is our new covenant. And just as the Jewish high priest in the old temple came out of the sanctuary and blessed the people by pronouncing God's holy name over them, so Jesus, makes himself known to the disciples and blesses us with the promise of the Holy Spirit. Now, whether or not we find that particularly interesting, we might still ask the question, well, what does that have to do with us? Well, it's no secret that we live in a world that is broken, a world in need of reconciliation. Again and again, we look around us and we see and hear stories of deep pain and of sorrow. The violence that goes on in our city, in our country, and throughout the world can sometimes overwhelm us in our thoughts and feelings to the point that sometimes we just become numb to it all. But as we, we look and try to see by faith the signs of our times, 
we see that in contrast to God's love, there is instead rage and division. Instead of mercy, we see vengefulness. And in contrast to a deeper and, and more intense respect for the gift of life as time goes on, what seems today, more importantly, the right to kill. And these are the idols of our time, a blasphemy against God that we take human life and treat it with such contempt. We kill or we let die those who seem to have no value, even though they are made in the image of God. Those who need our protection and care the most, the children, both born and unborn, the sick and the aged, and those seeking refuge and shelter, seeking safety. These are the ones who need our care, and yet they are treated as though they mean nothing. No wonder our world is in such a condition of such animosity and hatred, torn apart. And even though we talk of coming together, what could possibly do this? What will bring people back together in order to allow us to live in peace? We can see because of the depth of human sin that it requires nothing less than the immense love of God and his constant outpouring of mercy for us and also our willingness as God's people to receive that gift of love. We need the power of Christ's blood in our daily lives to heal the bleeding wounds of our own time. The letter to the Hebrews reminds us, as do other writings of the New Testament, that Jesus is not simply up in heaven waiting, doing nothing, but Jesus is pleading for us. And from his place with God, he is also pleading with us, seeking those who may be willing to receive his gift of love. We perhaps could imagine Jesus leaning on the side of his heavenly Father in heaven, constantly whispering into his ears all the needs and the prayers of us who call upon his name. And as the letter to the Hebrews said, Jesus is always making intercession for us. And there we know that because of the deep love between the Father and the Son, the response to our prayers is always the outpouring of love, the gift of the Holy Spirit. So in short, this Feast of the Ascension means not just that Jesus is gone, but that Jesus is even more present to us. For Jesus in his earthly life could only be in one place at a time, but now he is able to be with each and every one of us every single day of our lives and with everyone throughout the world who professes faith in him. Jesus is with us now in a new way, and Jesus continues to offer the gift of his love to us. The blood of his cross continues to pour out for us in the sacrament of the Eucharist and his word continues to point out for us the way to healing and to peace. And so in the strength and the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we have received, we are now Christ's co-workers. We are his witnesses. We are those who have been sent to extend into our own times and to everyone that we meet the mercy and the peace, the reconciliation and the unity that is God's great gift to us.